Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. I uh, hope everybody had a good trading day. Really, really good session today, uh, especially in the morning. A lot of the names uh, we covered uh, last night on uh, the video. Hopefully you guys, um, you know, got a piece of them. If not, uh, hopefully you are having a good uh, trading journey despite uh, what the market and what social media tells you. Uh, technical analysis is your only lifeline, okay? There's no secret sauce to this business. Uh, there's no opinions, okay? There people have a trillion different opinions. The stock's gonna go higher, the stock's gonna go lower. Out of those trillion, million, gazillion opinions, there's only one confirmation, and price action is either gonna go up or either gonna go down. And the most important part is just understand there is no holy grail. All the answers that you're looking for are right in front of you uh, in the charts. Uh, if you are brand new guys, thank you, right? Thank you for finding us. Uh, thank you for uh, spending uh, 10, 15 minutes of your day. Uh, only thing we ask, if you could be so kind, uh, take a second right now, click a like, uh, share, subscribe to our channel, and hopefully we'll continue uh, to provide um, good value, right? Good value on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, let's talk about it. You know, right? Yesterday, we talked about the idea that if the Qs started losing the bottom of the channel, again, we weren't discussing Armageddon. We weren't trying to figure out what's going to happen three weeks from now, three months from now, a year from now. We were just trying to take the data that we had on the close, like we do every single day, and try to win our interval, which was for today. And last night, we discussed uh, three separate symbols, right? We discovered three symbols uh, to the downside, and it was NVIDIA, it was Microsoft, and it was ARM, right? And those names we focus on because those names were close to their bottom of the channel yesterday. And like we discussed in last night's video, yeah, there's a slew of human beings betting those $1,000 weekly calls. Oh, and by the way, that expired tomorrow, right? And like we said last night in the video, it doesn't mean it has to get there. And that's the whole point of technical analysis. It's not what we want, it's what we have. It's not the market we want, it's what the market we have. And this is a perfect example of a day that if you look back on the scoreboard, you would be kind of amazed of how the day played out. I didn't know, okay, because I don't look at the Dow. I couldn't care less about the Dow. The Dow was only 30 stocks. I looked at towards the end of the day when I started doing my charting, I go, wait a minute, the Dow was up 500 points today? News to me, right? Because when I logged off at 2.30 in the afternoon, um, the market was doing absolutely nothing. And if you look at the market, and then we'll, go, we'll look at the Qs, and we'll look at pretty much anything else you want, you can see here in the last 45 minutes, there was an absolute massive reversal, which kind of confirms what we talked about last night. We weren't looking for, you know, the Armageddon trade. We were just trying to capitalize on the research from last night, the channels for that we need to be confirmed from yesterday, and things turned out uh, pretty well. Matter of fact, you know what, let's go to the pivots right away, and then we'll kind of uh, give you an idea of what I think it might happen uh, for tomorrow. So, uh, these were the names, right? There was nothing, you know, there's nothing more, nothing less. Uh, we were watching Tesla to the upside, didn't confirm. We were watching Google to the upside, didn't confirm. We were watching Hertz to the upside. I still really like this chart. Guys, for all you guys who are small cap traders or small price traders, guys, watch this Hertz. Again, this is the second day in a row we're watching it. It's failed now two days in a row on the 50-day moving average. If Hertz can start reclaiming back that 50-day moving average, remember yesterday they were coming for the June 10 call. So keep an eye on this thing for the next a uh, couple of days, but today uh, it didn't confirm. And these are the names that we talked about in last night's video. Arm had that nasty reversal yesterday. We talked about it last night in the video. 126.90, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Arm, right? It got below uh, yesterday's channel of 26.90, went all the way down to 122.80s. And look how close this is. The only reason why it stopped going down it stopped right at the daily Bollinger Band. Guys, watch this thing for the next week or so. If it starts losing this bottom Bollinger Band in the next couple of weeks, this thing's going to get hit. You know, again, doesn't mean it has to, but you got to watch the bottom range here when now it held uh, three times. Uh, NVIDIA, right? We talked about NVIDIA last night, 925. It loses the five-day moving average. It can get hit. Well, that's exactly what happened with NVIDIA. We talked about this 
uh, for a potential five-day loss. Again, if you're, if you're brand new to the channel, a lot of people just don't look at the five-day moving average. It's just not on their radar. Um, I've been using uh, the five and the 10-day moving average for the most part of 25 years. Um, I don't think a lot of people put a lot of stock, no pun intended, uh, into the five day, it's very, very important to me. So once Nvidia lost the 825 level, the stock got hit really, really aggressively. Uh, 825 all the way down to this 890 level. You know, you got to watch it again for tomorrow. Um, you know, if this thing starts losing today's bottom channel, I do think there is a shot. I, I, I really do. I think there's a shot uh, we can get back to this 20 day moving average uh, of roughly 878. Again, we don't know if it's going to confirm tomorrow today's channel, but there's something we definitely have to pay attention to because if Nvidia cannot rally early tomorrow, if they can't defend, um, if they can't defend a uh, price action going into a uh, last day of expiration and it starts losing today's channel again, this is could turn into uh, a day three, right? Because yes, yesterday was the first day, today was the follow through, and it could go into a day three reversal. Uh, back into the 20-day moving average. But excellent, excellent move today, 30-point move on NVIDIA. And last but not least, again, we talked about Microsoft last night, 421.35, held twice if it builds below, can flush. And here is Microsoft, right? We talked about Microsoft last night, and here is Microsoft. It took down the 421 and a quarter, uh, went all the way down to 419 before the market uh, saved uh, everything and everyone. And the last one we talked about last night's video, uh, Dash never confirmed the, the 141. If you guys remember, we talked about Guess. Yeah, we talked about Guess last night in the video, right? 3060 needs to build. Guess had a beautiful move today. Beautiful, beautiful move. It had a nice gap up at the earnings, four-day consolidation into the rising five-day. It got above yesterday's channel of 3060 and closed uh, basically about a dollar higher. Looks like it's at once to attack uh, those earnings highs in the next couple of days. Uh, but from the technical point of view, uh, the Qs, again, held the 10-day moving average, which is exactly what they needed to do. Now the Qs need to get back above uh, the last couple of days. If you guys can see here, it's gotten rejected off the 447.50 level the last two out of three days. That's what the Bulls need to do. The Bulls need to get back above that 447.50 level, and the Bears need to get below that 441 to extend uh, the potential back test, but everything else in between uh, is going to be a lot of noise. If you look at the SPYs, uh, again, SPYs did exactly what the Qs need to do for tomorrow. SPY took out two days uh, worth of selling. They engulfed that five-day moving average, that 521 level, and now the SPYs look like they want to get back to the top of the channel off this 524.11 area. If the bulls can get back above this 524 level on the SPYs, they can start the rally once uh, again. And the, the cool part about what we're doing here, and this is a very important, uh, this is a very important note. Like I said in last night's video, the back test came within this monster, monster range, right? Monster uptrend. And like we've been talking about this for a long, long time, you're going to have speed bumps in an aggressive bull market. This is, again, this is one of the more aggressive bull markets that we've seen now in the last 25 years. These are facts. These are not opinions. These are absolute facts. So until the bulls lose the 50-day moving average, which they obviously are so far over, that's when you can start talking about this one's going lower, that one's going lower. Everything else is just cash flow trades, the 5 into the 10-day, the 10-day into the 20-day. And in, in, again, if you're making a longer range bet on a stock that's way above demand, 99% of the time, you're going to lose money on your, on your short. So you really have to understand the dynamics of where the cycle is. And the cycle right now is way above the 50-day moving average. Matter of fact, it's hard even for the bears to get back to the 20-day moving average. Forget about the 50-day moving average. And that's exactly what, what, what things are happening. Um, if you look at individual names, uh, you got Microsoft again. Uh, not a great, you know, not a great view. But again, Microsoft has to kind of reclaim the five-day moving average, just the way the Qs uh, did. If you look at Meta today, you know, Meta got hit along with a lot of things, but again, reclaim back the 20-day moving average. Uh, Apple seems to be on this kind of reverse trend revenge tour. Every single time the market goes lower, Apple goes higher. Every single time the market goes higher, well, Apple goes lower. Um, so it's it's not in anywhere. It's not, it's in no man's land. It's just really trying to figure out uh, what it wants to do. To get bullish on Apple, Apple's going to need to get above this 174.5, 175 level on the close. So it's very hard to take uh, the stock seriously. Uh, Amazon is starting to look good. Uh, we, we're continuing to see some 180 uh, expiration for tomorrow. We're seeing 185s coming off the board. 
uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, if the market can put in a rally tomorrow, uh, guys, definitely, definitely watch Amazon above uh, the March highs. Some smaller names you want to keep an eye on. Look at JetBlue, right? For all you guys who trade the smaller names, look at JetBlue. JetBlue looks great. Uh, JetBlue, if they can start getting above uh, the February you know, February highs, actually literally on Valentine's Day, this thing can start spreading up, man. This thing looks really, really nice. If you look at the other uh, airlines, dare to say it, they're taking off. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week, right? Dallas already took off. Uh, look at, uh, what was the other, other names? I can't remember any, any other airlines' names. Uh, but anyway, anyway, look at JetBlue. Uh, JetBlue definitely looks good. And if they can just get above uh, those February highs, I don't know why my charts are not working here. Um, if they could just get above the February highs, uh, it could get its next leg up. Let me give you guys a couple of other names to kind of watch. Um, Hertz, we talked about. See, Tesla's a weird one, right? Tesla's an absolute weird one. Uh, it's not going down. It's not going up. Every single time it does go up, it kind of stalls. They come back down. I, I want to watch Tesla... I want to give it the benefit of doubt to the upside, but so far it's been really, really disappointing. We kind of talked about this uh, in the webinar that the stock has only closed with green candles six out of the last 19 sessions, which basically means the stock has only closed higher than an open for the last six out of 19 sessions. That's not really a ringing endorsement that it wants to go. But if it can start filling in this gap from the March, the March highs, this little gap here, Maybe we could finally start getting to this 188 level, but we're not even close to that level, guys. It is, I know a lot of people are very frustrated in how Tesla's been acting, but that's that's the whole point. You want to leave the stocks that are frustrating alone. You know, look, why spend all this time uh, concentrating on a name that doesn't have a clear path to the goal line versus stocks to do? And that's a very, very uh, important factor. Uh, also, Mara. Look at Mara. Uh, Mara's been a really, really good uh, acting stock in this whole Bitcoin our resurgence over the last couple of months. You know, watch this thing on the upper channel here in the next couple of days. If it could get back above this 20-day supply, you know, this Mara could start extending. So it looks uh, really, really good uh, as well. I, I tell you, I, I shared something a couple of days, you guys. Um, you know, I've, I've taken basically the last two days off of Twitter, and, and it feels great. I, it really does feel great. It, it's the least congested I felt in a long, long time. And, and again, if you're a brand new trader, I, I get it. A lot of times you get your ideas uh, from social media, but if you just concentrate on the charts, right? No noise, no bias, no opinions, and just really concentrate on the charts, understand your supply and demand zones and understand the importance of the supply and demand zones, you could really have a, a, a much needed clarity to approaching the trading day versus, I think it's going higher. I think it's going lower. You're a moron, you're an idiot. Yeah, that's so I made a conscious choice a couple of days ago to kind of get off Twitter uh, throughout the day. And I'm telling you, this has been the cleanest I've been watching uh, and executing probably in a very, very long time without any fluff, without any noise, uh, without any distractions. Uh, again, if you've been following me on Twitter for the last 14 years, again, we've been demonstrating pivots now uh, for a long, long time. I think it's enough. Um, I think it's enough of a, of a track record. Uh, that we have in price action before it takes place. If you want to join us uh, in the webinar, that's the place to be, right? That's the place to be. Uh, take advantage of a 30-day, 30-day uh, kick the you know, tires type of scenario. I, I think you'll like it. I really do. I, I, it's, it's very, very rare uh, that a trader walks in with a clear head and no bias and, and not really gain uh, a little bit of an edge. Uh, whether they decide to stay or leave, that's up to you. Again, tr pivots not might not be for you, uh, but the point is, at least it'll give you a nice, clear view of an alternative to the quote-unquote uh, normal market. That's it, guys. That's it. Guys, have a great night. God bless. We have some really good um, We have some really good value on tap for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is the last day of the week for all you guys who are celebrating uh, Easter. Happy Easter. Okay, tomorrow uh, is the last day. Friday, the markets are closed in observance of Good Friday. So for the rest of you guys, God bless. And I'll see the rest of you guys on the field. Take care, guys. Have a great, great night.